The historic Haskell Arch in Lawrence, Kansas, is a magnificent reminder of the rich sports and athletic achievements of American Indians. Haskell athletes won international accolades as a powerhouse in collegiate football in the 1920s and 30s. John Levi, an Arapaho from Bridgeport, Oklahoma, was named first team All-American in 1923. Jim Thorpe said that Levi was the greatest athlete he had ever seen. After graduation from Haskell, John Levi served as both an assistant and head football coach at Haskell. He later was invited to try out for the New York Yankees. Another All-American football player was Lewis Rabbit Weller. He was a Caddo from Northern Oklahoma. In his career at Haskell, he scored 13 touchdown runs of over 60 yards. In Haskell's win over the undefeated Oklahoma A&M, Rabbit Weller returned a kickoff for 90-yard touchdown, and then later returned a punt for a 95-yard touchdown to beat Oklahoma A&M 13-12. He later played professionally for the Boston Redskins and the Tulsa Oilers. Mays McLean, a Cherokee from Pryor, Oklahoma, was an All-American in football and led the nation in scoring in 1926. He scored an astonishing 253 points by running a record 38 touchdowns during the 1926 season, a record that stood for 62 years. He scored a record 55 points in one game, running for eight touchdowns and seven extra points in a game against Wichita University. The Wichita Eagle wrote, McLean put up the most astonishing exhibition of football ever seen in Wichita. 19-year-old Amasoli Patasani competed in the 10,000 meter at the 1920 Olympics. In an interview after the race, he was asked what he wanted to do, and he said he wanted to get back to Haskell and complete eighth grade. One of the great athletes of Haskell's history was Buster Charles, who came in fourth at the 1932 Olympics in the decathlon. By the end of World War II, Haskell's education role had evolved from a normal and trade school for American Indians into a secondary high school program with added post-secondary vocational programs. Transition came at a particularly difficult time in Indian history. In the early 1950s, the Congress was pushing to terminate all of the tribes and to cut off their trust benefits. To accomplish this, they established a policy that required Indian children to attend local public schools. The only exception was made for orphans and children in extreme poverty. They were permitted to attend boarding schools like Haskell. In spite of the adverse situation these students came from, the 1950s and 60s became a time of great achievement in Haskell athletics and once again established Haskell as a center for Indian athletic excellence, now on the high school level. But uh, the big story is in 1955, Haskell was 10-0, and, 0, and uh, they were ranked first in the state, and Ed Postok and John Edwards were the Kansas Kobacks of the year, and both of them rushed for over a thousand yards and both of them went on to college. I mean, and to that, that was, you know, part of the kind of the highlight of saying, I, I labeled from 1949, or really maybe from 53 after Haskell grew up, to 1961, to my senior year, was really the, the golden era for Haskell athletics.
During the 1950s and 60s, no one had a more positive influence on Haskell athletics than coach and athletic director Tony Coffin. Tony was a Potawatomi from Mayetta, Kansas, and he came to Haskell in the late 1930s as an assistant coach. He, uh, he had patience and he had understanding. And he had common, he was common with us. Being a special guy from uh, Mayetta, Kansas, I guess that, that little piece of land up there made him special. Because when he talked to us, it had meaning. We knew it, we all knew it. He was a, he was a very polite individual, very understanding. And he never shouted at us. Now I used to be amazed at that because most coaches will shout at you. But Tony Coffey never shouted at us. And I called a man a saint. And so he put his arm around me and said, uh, Jim, he said, I know where you come from. You're an orphan. You don't have anybody to look up to or any support, family support. So he said, I want to be part of your family. And I let him be part of my family. With his arm around my shoulder, he said, I live just down the street down here. Uh, you're welcome to my home. You're welcome to my icebox. You're welcome to be my family. And you're welcome to go to church with us. And so that was a start. And at that, at that time, he became a father to me. But Tony and his wife uh, were like that. And before his, his boys were born, I was the son. And John and Ed and all the rest of the guys became family to him. But I was in his house more than probably his kids were at the day he was born. And uh, I couldn't ask for a very better person to be a guidance or a father to now, me. Now, me, for myself, I feel that they took a little guy that was angry at the world and uh, made me worth something, made me worth being somebody, you know. Tony had a special gift for working with young Indian athletes. He was able to instill a strong work ethic in his players, and he inspired them to accomplish greater things than they thought they were capable of. All of these without the use of harsh discipline. He'd tell you how to do it, but he wouldn't tell you to do it. It came from in here, you know, he wanted it to come from you. And he just had a way with, with all of us um, I don't, and, I don't, and I don't care who it is, I'm sure they would tell you basically the same thing. He was really, uh, I mean, he knew the X's and O's, or he knew the you know, game plan, he knew those kind of things, but more than that, he, he uh, helped you become a complete person. And that, that's what I really, you know, as I've grown older, uh, and that's what I tried to do in my coaching years here at Haskell was. I remember as a freshman, sitting down and Tony Coffin, Coach Coffin is talking to all of the athletes. And he's talking about, in this audience, some of you can become great. Then he looked past the big football players, who I think had just come off of an undefeated season, and there was a young freshman, the smallest freshman, next to how was the second smallest. And he looked at both of us, Carl Pierce, and said, one of you, for example, I'm not just talking about these you big, great athletes, you young football players, but one of you two, the two littlest ones here. One of you might just be the person that goes on and achieves something great in sport. So Tony had that unique ability to, to inspire you within. I had a chance to come back after I graduated from college to work under him closely every day for five years. And so it was really valuable for me because as a beginning coach, I uh, every day it was like a coaching clinic. Tony was convinced that sports involvement at both a team and individual level gave Haskell students the greatest opportunities to develop self-confidence, pride, and character. These opportunities were few and far between in their home communities at that time. Coach Coffin's policy was to encourage all students that were physically able to participate in athletics, whether they were athletically gifted or not and his ability to motivate students can be found in the Haskell records of 1953 
when there were 173 boys enrolled at Haskell and 110 of those boys received athletic awards for interschool athletics. He helped me tremendously. You know, in sports, uh, he put me on detail in the gym and I shot hook shots for 45 minutes before we ever practiced and I got where I couldn't be. <laughs> During the track season, he once sent four teams to four track meets on the same day with different boys on each team. Haskell was the undefeated state champion that year. Coach Coffin and his staff encouraged students to stay in school. Like I said, I was there for two weeks and I was about ready to run off and come back home and that's when I, I was coming home, I was going to hitchhike home that time and I went out, I was walking toward the uh, north end of the uh, campus there and old Pete Shepard called me and called me in there and told me and everything and he convinced me to stay. He said, you stay till Christmas, and if you don't like it, you can stay home. And when I come back home on Christmas, I was ready to go right on back then because I missed Asco. He, he was a good guy, man. Yeah, he was, I learned a lot from him in, in sports, you know, and same way with Tony Coffin. I, you know, that guy was, he was a good idol guy, you know. He, he was, he knew what he was talking about, you know. From 1952 through 1962, Haskell dominated the Jayhawk Conference by winning 10 consecutive conference championships in track and field and cross country. And there were just so many good things happened. I mean, you know, you looked at that and we just dominated. Especially, we were state champions in 59. And I, it just goes through, the Haskell, we just dominated track and field and cross country. The Haskell football programs won two outright conference titles, one in 1953 and the other in 1959, with the 1955 team tying for the league title. While the 1951 football season had a disappointing record of two wins and seven losses, the 1952 season was a totally different story. Haskell had their best record since 1946 by winning eight games and losing only one that season. This was before entering the Jayhawk League and most of their opponents were much larger Kansas high schools. By far their strongest competitor that season was their final game against Emporia, Kansas. During that game, Ed Postoke rushed for an astonishing 196 yards. Tom Jimboy played as a running back in that game. And uh, I thought there for a minute there that we just might lose that game because it was closing seconds we scored that touchdown. And uh, never had run that play before. Mm. And uh, Tony called it, and I, I just thought, oh, no, this is not going to work. And uh, John took, took the ball and... Uh, Went around to right end, and Reginald the house. I think that's probably the first time he ever caught a pass, mm -hmm. and it just so happened he was wide open down on the end zone, mm -hmm. and we caught that, and uh, John threw it, mm -hmm. and uh, made some kids cry <laughs> there at Emporia. James Ryle, Lloyd Elm, and Ed Postoke were honored that year by being named All Conference. Ed Postoke was selected for the All-State team. James Ryle and Lloyd Elm were named All-State Honorable Mention. The undefeated 1953 Haskell football team has been referred to as one of the finest high school football teams in not just Haskell history, but one of the best in the state of Kansas prior to and during that time period. Statistically, the 1953 team was a juggernaut. I do. He was a good quarterback. He wasn't a tall person, but he was a good quarterback. They, their 1954 high school team went undefeated. 10-0 and 0 or 11-0, and 0, whatever it was. Yeah. He was. He was a good ball handler. Deceptive. And then 
with Johnny Edwards there, he could go from sideline to sideline before he'd finally end up going going downfield for a touchdown. He would almost tire people out from sideline to sideline. Yeah. And they averaged that year, the, their undefeated team, they averaged a first down every other play. So, I mean, you know, he could go five yards, Ed could go five yards, or he could go ten yards and no yards. But they averaged ten, you know, first down every other play that year. Uh, John Edwards, he was he was a great runner. He would get the ball and he would start from maybe da ten yards down here and, and then just zigzag, just like this. Just escaping from all the, you know, the the opponents, you know, and... And next thing you know, she he's scoring. Yeah. It was it was beautiful to see him run like that. I'd read it, but I remember the play. He got the ball. They stopped him, and he ran back around this side of the field. And then he wound up going to that side of the field, is like on the 30-yard line, and then coming on in. Mm -hmm. So. To, to make that touchdown, I don't know how many yards. I think it was grown over the years. Yeah. But I remember the play. Yeah. And he was so quick. Yeah. He was so quick. And for a person that had the speed he had, he had a quickness to go along with it. Ed touched the ball like six times. Three times he scored a touchdown. One of them like an 80-yard run right up the middle through everybody. He scored three touchdowns. And then to see uh, Homecoming, where he was uh, the uh, football captain, he and John were, and so they got to walk the Queens and things, and it was a big deal. So that was something that I enjoyed watching him do. Between 1953 and 1957, Haskell won four consecutive basketball conference titles, four district titles, and two regional titles. In 1953, Haskell advanced to the Class AA state tournament before falling to Wichita North, a much larger school with a much larger enrollment. Four players were named all-conference, James Ryle, Lloyd Elm, and Ed Postok were named first team. Walter Mills was honorable mention. In 1956, Haskell had its most successful high school basketball team, winning over 20 ball games. It was the first 20-win basketball season in school history. The 56 basketball team featured two exciting players, Willie Severe and Wayne Postok. Yeah, who we had full court pressure every game. And a lot of the games we would win in our last quarter because we were still running and those other guys would poop out. Yeah, we'd steal the ball and they were so tired of pressing the whole game, they would throw a pass with intercept layup, intercept layup. And that's how, that's how we'd won a lot of our games the last quarter. Who both made all conference first team. For Willie Severe, it was the second consecutive year he had been named to the All Jayhawk League first team. The 56 team worked its way through the district and regional tournaments, earning their way to the state tournament. I probably hadn't happened ever in intercollegiate sports playing for a state championship for Kansas. Start lineup was from Oklahoma. And so it was like uh, Ken Bailey and I were were the guards, and, and uh, Willis Severe and Elliot Rowell were the forwards, and then uh, Eugene Black was the uh, center. And so we're all from Oklahoma and uh, playing for the state championship. We got beat, uh, uh, it was a close game, I think, like three points and to win the state. 1957 was Coach Coffin's last year as head basketball coach, and the team had an excellent record of 17 wins and four losses. They won both the conference title and the district, but were upset in the regional final with Marysville. The team was led by two juniors, Bob McCoser and Ken Bailey. McCoser was named to the all-conference first team, Ken Bailey, second team, and Lee Edwards was honorable mention. Top honors went to Elliot Ryle, who was named most valuable player in the Jayhawk Conference. 
Sadly, 1957 was Ken Bailey's last season. He was killed in a tragic automobile accident in 1958. Now, I've talked to uh, coaches from back in that time when he was here. I'm talking about Northeast Kansas people, the older guys, because I see them on a golf course once in a while. They still talk about Ken Bailey. They, they went to Haskell football game just to watch that guy play. So yes, he was an outstanding athlete. In 1957, Coach Coffin suffered a heart attack and was forced to cut back on his coaching responsibilities. As athletic director, he hired Eustace Llewellyn to the varsity football coach. Coach Lou, as he was affectionately known, was a great admirer of Coach Coffin and had coached against him at Holton. And Tony and I had coached against each other for two years. And I, I've never known any person in, uh, in, any, in any part of my life that uh, the two of us just hit it off. We, we just, uh, we appreciated each other as, as coaching opponents. And, uh, and so, uh, and I was at that time, I was running the split T offense. And, uh, and Tony thought that uh, these Haskell kids would really be good. With the, at running the split tee, so that was one reason he wanted me to come down. And then... 1957 was Coach Lou's first year as head football coach. The severe flu outbreak on campus highly affected the football squad, postponing one game and knocking out 40 of the 60-man team. Despite these losses, the 57 team still featured several outstanding performers. Ken Bailey and Dave Hearn were announced as first-team All-Jayhawk League selections. Ken Bailey recorded one of Haskell football's highest single-season scoring records by scoring 108 points during the season. Hearn had a Haskell record of 120 tackles in one season and averaged over 13 tackles a game. Historically, Haskell has always been competitive in track and field, and in cross country. In 1953, teams across the state of Kansas competed without class divisions. Large city schools competed against smaller rural schools. In 1953, Haskell proved they could hold their own and were very competitive against much larger opponents. They were the dominant team in all events at four out of five meets that year, and won the Jayhawk Conference title. John Edwards and Franklin Beaver were leading point producers in track and field. The record-breaking relay team consisted of Frank Beaver, John Edwards, Marvin Sam, and Ed Postoke. John Edwards was referred to as the world's fastest Indian after he broke the national record for the 60-yard dash. Unfortunately, his record time was never officially recorded because he was timed with a stopwatch. Outstanding performers in cross country in 1953 were Marlon Thomas, Percy Lawrence, Eastman Factor, Dwight Zimmerman, and Franklin Beaver. The 1954 track and field team were undefeated and won both regional and state finals. They are considered to be one of the all-time best teams that Haskell ever produced. One of Haskell's all-time best mile runners was Ted Lewis, who set a mile record that year of 4 minutes 37 seconds. John Edwards and Frank Beaver, along with Warren Nephew, were consistent leading scorers. The 1955 track and field roster introduced a Haskell runner who was to become legendary as an Olympic gold medalist. Billy Mills. He was Haskell's highest scorer that year at the state indoor championship in Manhattan, Kansas. During the season, Mills, Ted Lewis, and Warren Nephew were the most outstanding performers. In the Ottawa relays, Mills broke the meets record with a run of 4.42. Warren Nephew set a new meet record in the pole vault. They went on to win their fourth Jayhawk League title and took second place in the state championship. 
The 1955 cross-country team were again Jayhawk League champions and were runner-up in the state championship, losing to a powerful 2A Wichita East team. The 1956 track and field team were again led by Ted Lewis and Billy Mills, who raked up points all years as distance runners. The state indoor meet, Ted Lewis clocked a winning time of 4.37 in the mile run, followed by Billy Mills at 4.39. They ran first and second in three meets that season, and at the Ottawa Relays, Ted Lewis broke the meet's record with a 4 minute 34 second mile. And at Emporia, he won the mile event with a personal best of 4 minutes 29 seconds. A week later, Billy Mills won the mile event with a time of 4.30, and Lewis then came in second at 4.32. Uh, Ted was constantly beating me, and then my, my, my drive was to eventually beat Ted. He played football on a Friday night, might have a few ribs that were a little bruised, and he'd come up and run against me Saturday morning in cross country. And we'd have these incredible battles, and we'd be running, and Ted would say, do you see that guy hit me? A couple of my, my, my ribs are bruised, and I'm struggling fresh, a good night's sleep, trying to beat him, and I'd get him at the finish. Uh, one year in, uh, in Paris, I was being re- interviewed uh, by La Keep, and this, this one reporter said, who was the toughest athlete you ever competed against? So I said, uh, Ted Lewis. And the guy starts flipping through the pages, and he says, I got all the world-class runners here. He's not on the list. <laughs> I said he was not a world-class runner. He was a world-class high school runner and uh, was the toughest athlete I ever competed against. Well, where is he from? Well, what country? And I said well, he's a member of the Mohawk Nation. We went to high school together. When Tony Coffin introduced the 1956 cross-country team at a Haskell pep rally, He told the assembled students and staff that this Haskell cross-country team was not only the best team in the state of Kansas, but in his opinion, it was the best cross-country team in the United States. The top five runners that year led Haskell to be the only team in the state to be undefeated that season. Leading the Indians were Billy Mills, Ray Wilson, Amos Carnes, Raphael Jefferson, and Dean Tosh. At the Haskell Invitational that season, Billy Mills ran what was considered to be a national record two-mile race with a time of 9 minutes, 8.5 seconds. In the spring of 1957, Haskell won their sixth consecutive Jayhawk League championship in track and field. Billy Mills bested his own record and set a new Kansas State record by running the mile in 4 minutes 22 seconds. Ken Bailey, David Hearn, Floyd Brokeshoulder, and Dean Tosh knocked nearly 5 seconds off their previous record by running the mile in 3 minutes 33 seconds. Angus Smoke won 3 events and also ran with the winning 880 relay team. He won four gold medals and scored 16 and a quarter points. Billy Mills and Ray Wilson were the two fastest distance runners in the state of Kansas. 1957 was a rebuilding year for coach Carlos Toibo and the Haskell cross country team with only three lettermen returning. But even with the loss of four of their five top runners, the young cross-country team won the Jayhawk Conference title and were the regional champs and were runner-up in the state championship, losing to a powerful two-way school, Wichita East. Without Billy Mills, Ray Wilson took over the role as top distance runner. The regional champions were Melvin Pagliestawa, Garland Plenty Hoops, Jerry Alexander, Gerald Tuckwin, Ray Wilson, and Roly Fry. The 1958 track team won their seventh straight Jayhawk League title. At the Emporia Relays, the mile relay team with John Jones, Sonny Foley, Bob McCosser, and Jerry Christie, and the medley relay team with Edmund Kuhn, Richard Smith, Dave Hearn, 
and Howard Smith all won first place medals. Bob Bradley broke the Haskell Javelin record, and Ray Wilson became the winning long distance runner. Other outstanding competitors that year were Gerald Alexander, Garland Plenty Hoops, and Gerald Duckworth. Even with only four lettermen returning to run cross country in 1958, the Haskell Indians were once again able to win the Jayhawk League Championship and again were the runner-ups in the state championship, losing to Wichita East. Two new runners, Alex Dorr and Dan Friday, emerged as the team's top runners. Haskell also was invited to run in the Missouri AAU meet they won the meet with Alex Dorr running the course with the winning time of 10 minutes 28 seconds. Before I, I really became an athlete, I remember my sophomore year, uh, coach said, maybe you shouldn't play football, maybe you should run cross country, Phil. So I took off for cross country. And I made, the, I made the fifth man, the last man. You run five men in, in cross country, and I was the fifth man on the B team in cross country. But we went to the championships that year, and a perfect score is five, and the A team made a five. That means the first five runners were Haskell runners, and then the B team came across, and the first five runners were Haskell runners, and I was fifth man on the B team. <laughs> so that was my one claim to fame when I first started, you know. And then after that, I kind of grew up and, you know, I got to be a starter and everything, but just around good people. In the spring of 1959, the winning streak was kept alive by the track and field team with Haskell winning their eighth consecutive Jayhawk League title. Bob Peaches Bradley continued with high scores in the javelin throw, and his brother Russell Bradley came in first in javelin at the conference championship that year. Alex Dorr set a conference record in the high jump at 5 foot 10 inches, and the mile relay team broke a Haskell record that was set in 1950. The team of Gerald Tuckwin, Ken Taylor, Jet Wade, and Ken Scott ran the course in 3 minutes 51.8 seconds. Gerald Tuckwin also won the 880. My specialty was the hurdles and I ran the highs and the lows. Um, and uh, I could also run the uh, quarter mile, and I could also do run the 220. Any, any further than quarter mile, I couldn't do. In the fall of 1959, the cross country team won eight out of nine meets to win their eighth consecutive Jayhawk League championship with only one loss at the state championship to Wichita East. At the heart of the team were Dan Friday, Chester St. Clair, Gerald Tuckwin, and Sam Fixico. The fall of 1959 also saw a Jayhawk Conference championship for the football team. Haskell's defensive team was described as the best of the decade, with Tillman King, Claude Sumner, Jack Sewell, Herman Ferris and Victor Others. We, we lost one game that last year and that was a hard one because during the uh, 75th anniversary when all of the old pros came back and, and we become we met we met the idols the, the the teams of 1926 and we wanted to do good we were unscored on undefeated and then we had a flu epidemic that that fall and, and over half of our players got laid out with that so we had to postpone one of our games and then we played the next one on half a crew during a homecoming and we lost the game but we we were on the half staff and that, that was hard to you know for people to understand well why did you lose that you haven't been scored on well it happens but we learned from it we went forward i think we only let uh, out of the whole year of nine games, we only let to six touchdowns go across the line. Victor Others was named to the 1959 All-State team. Outstanding offensive players that season were Ed Kuhn and Victor Others.
The 1960 track and field team continued the winning tradition by winning the Jayhawk League and the regional championship and were once again runner-up in state competition. Three new Haskell records were set by Gary Sardi, setting a new standard in the 100-yard dash in 9.8 seconds. Russell Bradley threw the javelin for 183 feet 8 inches. And Ben Carpenter heaved the shot put 46 foot 9 inches. But Gary Sardi was my classmate and we're from the same location. He was from uh, Coweta, which is where my some of my family came from. But I knew him real well and he was an outstanding track. The school I went to the state three years in a row and we won two state championships and I ran on a mile relay team uh, with guys who were good outstanding athletes and it was fun it was a growing thing he, there was no one could beat Gary Sardi in, in a foot race he, he won every he he won all the hundreds of two hundreds and the quarters set records almost everywhere he went except that he got second I think in the K relays because his starting block slipped out from under him Tony was really and I know you said you can talk about him a little later on but ahead, yeah. he, he was really a psychologist to me I mean, my senior year, I was undefeated in the 880-yard run, or 800 meters, they call it today. And, uh, I mean, I'd come in, you know, Tuesday or something, he'd say, you know, how are you going to run the race next Saturday, that kind of, or next Friday, you know, you're going to be running at Pittsburgh and whatever. And I'd say, well, you know, I'm sit back and 165 yards to go, I'm going to take off and go by him. And he'd look at me and he'd say, you know what, if you get that haircut, he said, you're going to look really great when you break that tape. You know, and he was telling me, you're going to win, but look better, you know. By 1960 and 61, Haskell's enrollment was steadily dropping after the Bureau of Indian Affairs decided to phase out the high school program to make Haskell a post-secondary school. In the process, they stopped enrolling freshmen one year and added sophomores the following year. Despite the shrinking enrollment, Haskell continued to be competitive in athletics. The 1960 cross-country team won both the Jayhawk League championship, their ninth consecutive title, and went on to win the Kansas State championship. This despite losing four of their top runners who graduated in the spring. The outstanding young team with Dan Friday, Sam Fixico, Jeff Tanner, Frank Armajo, and Isaac Chavez defeated their longtime rivals Wichita East by winning their first state championship since 1956. The 1960 football record was five wins, four losses, and tied Haskell for second place in the Jayhawk League. Phil Homaratha as quarterback threw 130 passes with 55 completions and 7 touchdowns. He was selected first team all-conference. Other outstanding athletes, Danny Littleax with 101 tackles. Claude Sumner had the single game record of 18 tackles. Ken Taylor, Max Factor, Dan Scott, and Ken Scott were named second team all-conference. I never played football before, and I was in a gym class, and Llewellyn kept after me, you know, because he noticed how fast I was, and he kept saying, why don't you come up for football? I said, no, I don't want to play football. So anyway, that one day he called me chicken. That's all it took, man, and I told him, I said, I'll be out there, and so anyway, that's why I started playing football for high school when I was a freshman. and. Uh, The basketball team had five wins and 14 losses. Ken Taylor was named second team all-conference and Phil Homaratha was named honorable mention. In 1961, Haskell won its 10th straight Jayhawk League track and field title. This was a remarkable milestone given the overall size of the student population and the personal hardships these athletes had to overcome before coming to Haskell. The Indians dominated the league. 
outstanding track athletes on the 1961 team were sprinters Bob Yarbrough, Gerald Poe, hurdlers Dan Scott, Claude Sumner, and Sam Snake, field event specialists Dan Albert, Daryl Ferris, and javelin thrower Phil Homaratha. Distance runners were Dan Friday, Sam Fixico, Isaac Chavez, Herb Gillum, Chester Mills, and Tom Tuckwin. The 1961-62 athletic season was the final year for the Jayhawk League. Two larger high schools dropped out because of increased enrollments, forcing the remaining Jayhawk League schools to join the newly formed Centennial Conference. The 1961 cross-country team captured their 10th and final Jayhawk Conference Championship. Notably, Sam Fixico came within two seconds of matching Billy Mills' Jayhawk Conference record of 10.03 by running the two-mile course in 10.05. Haskell runners who finished in the top five at the conference meet were Isaac Chavez and Gary Chingman. This was the first team since 1954 that did not qualify to go to the state championship. The 1961 football team won four and lost four with one tie that season. The team was led by backs Charles Mealy, Sam Snake, John Romero, and quarterback Dwayne Harris. On the defensive side were Tom Tuckwin, Chester Mills, Richard Palmer, and Haskell High School's all-time leading tackler, Daryl Ferris, who finished the season by making an incredible 186 tackles for the year, an average of 20 tackles per game. Ferris went on to be named to the all-area and all-state teams for his remarkable play. In the spring of 1962, Haskell track and field team won their 10th straight conference title. Sam Fixico and Isaac Chavez were the best in the mile run. Tom Tuckwin and Billy Mills' younger brother, Chester, ran in the 880. Three former athletes came back to Haskell as coaches. Wayne Postoke, who had been a star athlete in both football and basketball, came back and coached for 10 years, and he was the only Haskell coach to have two 20-win seasons in basketball. Phil Homaratha, who was quarterback for Haskell during his senior year, and who had also lettered in basketball and track, went on to Tarkio College in Missouri, where he was named an NAIA All-American defensive back and was even invited to try out for the Dallas Cowboys. He returned to Haskell for a record 42-year coaching career. In 1987, he took the men's basketball team to Division II National Finals. He took his women's basketball team to the National Junior College Finals. And in 2008, he took his women's basketball team to the NAIA Nationals. His deep devotion to Haskell was evident to everyone who knew him. Gerald Tuckwin starred as the 880 or half mile runner for Haskell and still holds the record for the third best time in the 880 in Haskell history. He went on to be a three year letterman at Wichita State University and after serving in the U.S. Air Force during the Vietnam War, returned to Haskell and coached for 33 years. He also served as athletic director. He achieved national recognition by being named NJCAA Coach of the Year two times, and he coached 30 All-Americans. He was inducted into the American Indian Athletic Hall of Fame in 2009. After graduating from Haskell, John Edwards ran professionally for a track club in California. He was named the world's fastest Indian in 1966 after he broke the national record for the 60-yard dash. Unfortunately, his record time was never officially recorded because he was timed with a stopwatch rather than electronically. 
Billy Mills went on to the University of Kansas and then to the 1964 Olympics in Japan, where he won the gold medal in the 10,000 meter. The 1950s and early 60s were a remarkable time for Haskell sports and athletic programs. In basketball, between the years of 1953 and 1957, a five-year span, Haskell won four consecutive conference titles, four district titles, and two regional titles. Haskell football programs won two outright conference titles, one in 1953, the other outright title came in 1959. The three highest scorers in Haskell High School football were John Edwards with 143 points, Ed Postoke with 109 points, and Ken Bailey with 108 points. The 1955 team tied for the league title. The Haskell track and field teams had an outstanding 10-year record of Jayhawk League titles, never losing in conference competition. The Haskell cross-country teams also won 10 consecutive Jayhawk League titles. In addition, they won six regional titles. And in 1956, a team described by coach Tony Coffin as the best team in the nation, they were undefeated and won the Kansas State title. Not enough can be said about the coaches Tony Coffin, Lou Llewellyn, Carlos Toyabo, and their assistants, who were able to instill in young athletes, many of whom were from broken homes, a sense of pride, purpose, confidence, and a determination to exceed all expectations. And I believe we had good uh, staff because they were interested in the students and they infused their own uh, uh, desire to per, be perf perfectionists, to be good, to learn, to earn. All the things they saw, they put into us. And I'm proud that they were here at that, that time. You know, my experience at Haskell was, was a, a tremendous experience. Uh, I believe it taught me to be... Uh, a better person, uh, to learn independence, and uh, just to look out for oneself. And uh, uh, of course, I've uh, made friends with uh, other students who became uh, really personal friends, uh, so deep that uh, you know I consider them as brothers and sisters. Haskell's century-long tradition of outstanding athletic achievement is a great source of pride for former students, athletes, and their families. But more than this, it has been a source of national pride. It has demonstrated to young American Indians that they can not only compete, but that they can excel. It was this national pride that led to the construction of the Haskell Stadium in the 1920s, when Haskell had become a national power in college football. The Haskell Stadium was built entirely with the donations from Indian people from across the country. No state or federal funding was used. And when it opened, it was totally paid for. Even today, it remains as the symbol of a century of American Indian athletic pride.